Okay. Oh, here we go. Woo! This is fun. Whoa. Welcome, folks, to Lesson 4. Last week, we learnt how to strum chords. We put the exercise together. We are sort of flowing through a four-beat strum. We incorporated sort of more up strumming. And we talked about the grey strum, which is a really great way to move from one chord to the other to give yourself a little bit of extra time but keep the momentum of the right hand. Today, we're going to start talking about playing scales and chords because that's a really big feature of rockabilly. And even if you're a beginner, you know, and that is daunting, hopefully this lesson makes it something that's bite-sized and achievable. Now, if you are having problems with the chords, uh, that's okay. I would probably still have a go at the single line stuff and hopefully you've been practicing your pentatonic scale as well. But I think it's really important to start incorporating switching from rhythm to lead playing if you want to be a rockabilly player. Let's get to that right away. I'm really big on that with all my teaching. Like if I've got jazz guys, you know, as soon as we start learning the patterns and the scales they need to know, I get them to apply it straight away because why not build up, you know, the ability to improvise and, uh, and the information at the same time? Because if you spend years working on concepts and not applying them, you're back to square one when you start applying them. So let's get to work. So you remember last week we did the uh, the strumming. What we're going to do today, we're going to do one bar of strumming, and then we're going to do one bar of lead playing. Like this. It's not the easiest thing in the world. In fact, I could probably show you that even I understand this is challenging. I'm going to flip the guitar over. Okay, I can't believe I'm, I'm doing this, but let's give it a shot. I'm going to I'm going to put the guitar like this. Now I've never I never really play like this. I think I tried this the other day and it was quite a laugh. I'm going to show you left-handed, so I understand what to do. But my goodness, let's see if I can do it. People think I was just born playing guitar. This is going to prove I was not born playing guitar. That would also have been very strange in the delivery room. Anyhow, so here we go. Can't even hold the pick. Okay. Oh, here we go. Fun. Whoa. Ah. Here we go. Okay, I should have gone up first because the guitar's upside down. I'm giving myself a little break on that one. See, completely awful. I've never practiced like that though. So I can assure you, yes, the knowledge helps, but if you practice for a couple of weeks, th that would be a reasonable expectation if you spend a few weeks on that even. Uh, but of course, if you get more time, you'll get through it quicker. Um, but like everything, I always encourage students to do things smooth, do things very slowly, and worry about accuracy and and fluidity. To begin with, speed can come later. So that's it for today's lesson. 
because that's going to be, you know, something to really start putting together. Next week, I'm going to start adding some extra notes to those licks. We're going to start looking at some more advanced techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs, okay? And we'll build from there. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. Make sure uh, you share this with someone that you know uh, might have a laugh at me flipping the guitar over. And of course, don't forget to check out my other videos and click like. Oh, oh and just quickly, I want to thank my latest Patreons. Christopher Falkowski, who joined for a whole year on the top tier. Paul O'Loughlin, Tim Ertman, Dash, Dave N, Alfred Wilhelm, Margaret Rosenfeld, Carpentier, Marshall, Scott Stannard, Veyron Jean-Francois, and Lefebvre Florence. I apologize for the attempts at saying the names. Thank you so much. And thank you to Shannon Mowat, who also joined the website. Uh, really appreciate it. You guys all have a great day, and thank you so much.